Biblical truth of our hymns. We're up to 79 hymns so far. And oh, I think we're halfway through the book. Today, who doesn't know Jesus loves me? Who doesn't know the history behind Jesus loves me? I didn't. Who cannot forget the words of Jesus loves me? So it was written by Anna Barlett Warner. She's an American writer. Offers several books, poems, and music set to hymns and religious songs for children. She's, uh, she was born on Long Island and lived in New York. And her best known hymn is Jesus Loves Me. However, some stanzas of this appears in modern hymnals rewritten by David Ruffler McGill. We'll look at that in a moment. And... We have the Jesus Loves Me, a Christian hymn, written by Anna Barlett Warner. And in context of this hymn, of her poem, in 1860, a novel called Say and Seal, written by her older sister, Susan Warner, in which the words were spoken, the original poem by Anna, were spoken as a comforting poem to a dying child. I never knew that. And how many children we, we teach Jesus loves me, this I know. And the foundation of this hymn was for, the, the, the poem was for a dying child. The tune was added in 1862, William Bradbury Along with his tune, Bradbury added his own chorus, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. After publication as a song, it became one of the most popular Christian hymns in churches around the world, especially among children. Uh, it says here, quite interesting, the tune is, is called China. In 1943, in the Solomon Islands, John F. Kennedy's PT-109 was rammed and sunk. Islanders, Buku, Baku, Gaska, and Aurorai Kamanaman, who found Kennedy and the survivors, remember that when they rode on PT boats, when they rode on PT boat and retrieved the survivors, the Marines sang a song with the natives who learned it from the Seventh-day Adventist missionaries. Now, the music comes long after the poem. The hymn was titled China in some hymnals in the 19th century. Some early hymnals, such as the modern hymnal 1926, explain that this title was subtitled note that said, The Favorite Hymn of China. And by the time of later hymnals, such as the Baptist Hymnals 1975, the subtitle had been dropped and the tune just simply was called China. Now, here's the poem originally published in 1860 and the three stanzas that follow that were written by Anna for a dying child. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. You understand now? I don't know if I'm going to be able to sing this this song anymore without. I hope I remember the story. Jesus loves me, loves me still. Though I'm very weak and ill. That's the child. From his shiny throne on high. Comes to watch me where I die. Jesus loves me, he will stay. Close beside me all the way. Then his then his little children will take up to heaven for his dear sake. Now we have the the hymn by William Baxter Barbary. And I've got the six six standards here. Originally had three. There was added three. And I'm not going to say anything to that, but 
Uh, famous people have done this song. Ray Stevens. Whitney Houston. Brenda Lee. Rosemary Cooley. I'm just saying you may know these names. Alabama. Dionne Warwick. Whitney Houston with Kelly Price. So, uh, you may know those names. I don't. That's remarkable. From a, a dying child. Have you just ever... Somewhere, sometime. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Now the chorus, the refrain, has been added. That wasn't for that dying child. Well, let's look at the hymn. Jesus, I mean, and she wrote three to three stanzas, so we we see Jesus three times mentioned. A lot of the hymns, remember, they don't have Jesus mentioned. With Bradbury, we have Jesus mentioned six times. And then with his chorus, we got Jesus three more times. So in the full hymn that we have in this hymnal, nine times the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus loves me. Now, Jesus does not love you if you not put your faith and belief in him. If you trust religion, if you trust in yourself, you don't believe in God, you don't believe in the creation of God, you believe in evolution, you believe in science, you believe you're great and wonderful and how mighty you are, Jesus doesn't love you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if you reject that son, John goes on to tell us later on, John chapter 3, the last verse, verse 36. He said, he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Jesus loves you if you believe in him. And Jesus loves you if you obey him. Jesus loves me, this I know. I know it. John writes that these things, John writes his God, these things have I written, uh, that's first John. John writes that his gospel is written that we may know the testimony of Jesus Christ. And John the Apostle was the beloved apostle of Jesus Christ. And he writes in, in first John, these things have written as you're known the love of the Father. And God is love. If you're saved and you know you're saved, you know Jesus loves you. And why? For the Bible tells me so. Capital B. We love him because he first loved us. Greater than uh, a love, uh, the love of God. And it goes throughout, throughout the New Testament on how God loves us so much. Why? I don't know. I don't understand why he loves us. I'm a sinner. I gotta confess, I need First John one nine. Little ones, and this was written to a, a child dying. Little ones to him belong. And let me go far to say, we're not going to get into doctrine. That if a child dies not in their sin of having no knowledge of sin at all, he does not acknowledge or knows that his sin is against the personal God himself. He may sin to know that, you know, I got mom and dad mad at me. But if he hasn't realized that he's got God and he dies, that child goes off to heaven, goes off to glory. So if there is a child here and he doesn't have any knowledge of sin towards the relationship of God, and I'm going to sneeze in a moment, so forgive me. That child will die and still go to heaven. Thank you, come. Apologize. Ugh. It's only after you realize that sin 
is accountable to God. You sin against the Almighty God. Little ones to him belong, and those little ones have, have not sinned. Or, I mean, they sin, but they have not sinned against God realizing. What is that age? It all depends. I think it'd be a lot younger age if you're brought up in a Christian home with a Bible. Whereas if you're brought out in the world and, you know, you haven't been to church or you go to church twice a year with your family. Depends on the circumstances. But children belong unto God. And there's a the thing that when I preach on the street, and I got, you know, I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I see a mother or, or father or both parents with a child, I will immediately within my message when I get, I will say, it is your responsibility. I'm not, I, I say, I, let me, I say to them, Jesus said, it is your responsibility. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me. It's a parent's responsibility, lost or saved, you, lost or saved, to bring that child to Jesus. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. This is about a little boy who's going, a little child, I don't know if it's a boy. This is about a child who's dying. Remember, this original poem was written for a dying child. They are weak. Children are weak. And yet they have great faith in their parents. Do we not take our children, we throw them up in the air, and hey, we catch them. We throw them up in the air, yay, we catch them. And they can be easily deceived. Such as Satan has done in the public school system by taking the creator out of the public school system and giving them evolution. They're going to believe it because an adult told them, we come from Big Bang, we come from monkeys. But he, capital H, is strong. You know how strong Jesus is? He created Jesus Christ, when he finally ended up at the cross, the Bible says his figure was so disfigured, he didn't even look like a man no more. No one ever suffered as great a pain as Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh. No one. Ever. I can't even sit in a dentist's chair without... And I, I, I get all nervous. I get, ah, just a Novocaine needle. And how strong is Jesus? He conquered the devil and he conquered death. That we might have eternal life. I am not going to hell because of Jesus. It ain't my strength. It's the strength of Jesus Christ. How strong is Jesus? One day he's coming back in a horseback and all the enemies of God and the Jews are going to be cast off into hell as he will take over this entire planet and give the land back to the Israelites. And Anna's right in the, that little boy. Jesus is strong, young man. I know you're sick. I know you're dying. But Jesus is strong. Remember the foundation of this hymn again. A little, I think it's a boy. I'm going to say boy. A, 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 ch <coughs> a child is dying. Jesus loves me. He who died, Christ died. You don't believe Christ died? Then you, you're not saved. And I know there's a teaching out there that Jesus passed out, sort of said. And then when they when they laid him on the on the on the, the stone foundation in the tomb, the, the coldness of the stone, and he perked himself up. And that's a that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a heresy. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and he was buried. 
and he arose again the, the third day according to the scriptures that we may have eternal life. He who died, Jesus died. My God, my Savior, gave up the ghost. Heaven's gate to open wide. When Jesus died, the veil of the temple from the top to the bottom was wrenched. And that opened the door for me to get to heaven. By faith and belief on Jesus Christ alone. You know this, you know what Anna is doing? Remember, the first three stanzas are hers. She's telling that little boy, you're dying. Jesus Christ is strong. Jesus Christ died for you. That woman, in her poem, is telling that little boy who's dying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Should we hear that? He will wash away my sin. He will wash away my sin. Young man, I have been cleansed, she's saying. I have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That is my testimony. She's telling the boy, you can be saved. Here's the gospel. It's happened to me, young man. It's happened to me. Let his little children come in. And they'll come in. The disciples tried to stop the children. Jesus said, no, stop the little children come on to me. Except you have faith as a child. Jesus loves me. Loves me still. You mean when I say, yes, he loves me still. He forever loves us that put our faith and trust in him. Now, on this side of eternity, when we're living on this planet Earth, we're alive before the rapture, before death. I can't imagine how he can still love us. And he still does. Though I'm very weak and ill. That's, that's the child dying. You're dying. You're sick. I'm weak and I'm ill also. We all are. I'm going to die one day if the rapture doesn't happen. What is that? That's weak and ill. That's sin. The wages of sin is death. Young man, we're all going to die like you. You're just going to go a little sooner. You're going to go home to Jesus quicker than us. From his shiny throne on high, that's what Revelation describes that throne as, comes to watch me where I lie. Lying in that bed, you're sick. People today, some people got coronavirus, they're lying in bed, their family can't see them, uh, their pastors can't come to see, they can't see visitors, the hospitals closed down. And I don't know how often doctors and nurses visit them, but besides that fact, if you are a child of God by, by faith through Jesus Christ, God's there with you in that bed. Whether you come out of coronavirus or you go to glory through Jesus Christ alone, your family may not be able to be there, understandably, but God is there. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, Jesus said. Oh, coronavirus, that's going to keep God away. That ain't going to stop God. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me. All the way. The only time... God, and you can't say absence, he said, I'll never leave you for safety. The only time that when God is left at a standstill is when we go off and backslide. But the Holy Spirit is still dwelling in me. And when I backslide and leave God, God hasn't forsaken me. Wherever I go, the Holy Spirit goes. 
and the Holy Spirit is Jesus and the Holy Spirit is God, the Trinity are one. So wherever I go, if I love him, and I do, when I die, he will take me home on high. If you're a saved Christian and I don't know why you would, but you get back tonight and you just deny the Lord because, you know, you want your family, you want that job. That doesn't mean that, that God's going to say, all right, you stay. The Bible says, yeah, Jesus said, I will deny them that, that, that deny me before the Father. Father, you know, he's one of ours, but he's going to get wood, hay, or stubble. And that verse, the first verse by uh, Montgomery Stepping aside from what Anna wrote. We ought to love God all the time, but what happens if you get angry with God and you're a Christian and you're saved and you become bitter? You, you're, you're not going to heaven? No, that's not what the Bible teaches. Jesus loves me. Oh, did I finish that? He will take me home. Oh, I did. Jesus loves me. This I know. As he loved so long ago. You can take that when Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. Yeah, that's the love of God. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But that love goes even further back into history. That love goes forth when Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis 3. That already in Genesis 3.15, you see the prophecy of the suffering Messiah, the Lamb of God, that would suffer for our sin. And even before that, the Bible goes even further to say, from the very foundation of the world, Jesus Christ knew what we were going to do. And Jesus Christ had already spoken to the Father, saying, I will go and die for them. And we know what they're going to do. That love goes even before Adam. That love goes even before I was born, before my grandparents were born, before my great grandparents, my great great grandparents, my great 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 grandparents. The love, it's been a long time. Taking children on his knee, that's Bible. Saying, let them come unto me, that's Bible. That's 100% Bible, there it is. Jesus loves me still today, present, now. Not at yesterday. He loved me yesterday. That's okay. He loved me yesterday. He loves me now. Walking with me on my way. I should, it, it, really, I would think that it should say we walking with him on the way. Let him guide. That's a little problem. That's, that's Nick Picky. I, 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 would, I would rather have it say walking, me walking with him on the way. But I know what, I know what the, the thing is saying. Walk, the, whole, the whole him is what Jesus is doing for us. That's Nick Picking, but wanting as a friend to give. What greater friends than if a man lay down his life? You gotta admit that you may have some friends out there, and they may be your best friend. Are they willing to give their life for you? That's what the Bible says about a husband to a wife. A husband to love his love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Light and love. Giving light and love. To all who live. To all who die too. <laughs> New Jerusalem is going to be no more darkness. You believe it? Yes. What? Jesus loves me. Do you believe it? Yes. What? Jesus loves me. Do you believe it? Peter? I don't know if Bradbury had that in mind, but it was three times that Jesus said, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. 
feed my sheep. Jesus, you love me? Lord, yeah, you know. Feed my lambs. Peter, what? Do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? How? The Bible tells me so. That plain and simple. The Word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word. Jesus said, I love you. My word shall never pass away. And I hope you remember, I hope I would remember the first three stanzas. If your church pastor or song leader say, you know, we're going to sing tonight or this morning. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me. I hope you remember the first three stanzas. Was the gospel written to a, a child that's dying. Setting that child off. That when he dies, he'll have eternal life. And Jesus, the one that loves him, according to the Bible. Thank God. Loves him. No problem. Thank you.